G'day from beautiful, sunny Barcelona. A lot of people ask me, is it better to go to a Grand Prix and watch it live or should I watch it on television? I'm gonna answer that question in this video because I've seen some 110 plus Grand Prix and I've watched plenty on television. So if you stick around, I'll answer that question. I did a poll on my YouTube channel going back a couple of months ago now and I asked people how many had been to a race. Well, 65% said that they'd never been to a race. And that made me wonder, why not? Of the 10,000 people who voted though, 3% said they were planning to attend a race in 2023. And really, if uh, you're a fan, why would you not want to go to a race? But I guess when you look at it, it's not like a normal football competition in your home country or state where you've got a chance to go. F1 is quite restrictive in the fact that it's based all around the world and it's not cheap to attend a race. But first up, let me explain some of the pros and cons of both options. For a start, if you're at the track, you're going to get a sense of the noise and it's incredible. TV can't come anywhere near it and really no one can describe what that sounds like. And it used to be a whole lot more, um, I was gonna say impressive, but it was almost excruciating when uh, we were back in the days when the cars were really loud. <laughs> Those days you couldn't even stand in the tunnel in Monaco without ear protection. Today it's a little uncomfortable without protection but you're not going to do any damage to your hearing I wouldn't have thought for a short exposure. What about the smell? Yeah it's impressive sometimes and because I get so close to the cars at various tracks I think oh I want to describe that to people what it's like which you can't but it is amazing and certainly at some tracks if you are sitting in stands that are close to the action you will smell the F1 cars go past. It's impressive. And then there's the color of the sport. It's vivid when you're there in person. And there's a lot going on in your field of view. Now that's something that television will struggle with. If you're sitting at home watching the race on TV, yes, you'll get immaculate shots of whatever they're focusing on. But when you're at the track, you can choose what you focus on. You're not dictated to by a television network. There are changes though with the television coverage in so much as there are now different angles you can see by selecting different buttons depending on who your provider is. So that aspect of the sport is expanding. And what about the sense of community when you're at the track? It's quite phenomenal. If you are sitting say uh, in a stand in Austria where the Dutch have taken over, suddenly you become a part of that Dutch army. And same with the Tifosi in Italy. It's a really marvelous experience to be assuming that you're not anti whatever that crowd is, to be amongst that uh, group of people. And you won't get that on television at home. Maybe if you've got 10 or so mates around there, yes, but you're not gonna be with 30,000 other people all cheering on or booing as it is sometimes um, a particular driver. Another plus about attending an event is the fact that you get to travel and um, who doesn't like to travel? Certainly most people do. And Formula One is a great opportunity for you to go to a different culture, experience different food, stay in nice hotels or meet interesting folk that you wouldn't do watching it on television. So there's a whole social scene around going to an F1 race. And remember, at the track, you are maybe there for six hours, but you're gonna be seven or eight hours outside the track with uh, like-minded people in cities where there's a buzz going on. However, you always have to weigh up the fact that you're going to peak periods in every single Grand Prix city. And I know from my travels, it's darn expensive. And I'll give you an example, in Monaco, I paid 700 Aussie dollars for a one room night before the race started. That rate went to $15,000 on the Saturday night. What is that? That's a 20 times bump in the price. <laughs> If you're not sure which day you want to collect a rental car, don't make the mistake of making a booking and then thinking you can deduct a day closer to the date and save some money. It doesn't work like that. Most car rental companies will price it at the new rate when you go and change a booking. I had one recently where I paid, I don't know, $500 for a car, and then I said, right, and now I only need it for four days instead of five. And instead of being 20% cheaper, it was 20% more expensive. So if you're in a situation like that, book a six day rental and a five day rental and even a four day rental and then cancel the two that you don't want closer to the date. An F1 race lasts 90 to say 120 minutes, but you get so much more when you book a ticket with an F1 package because you're probably gonna go for three days. That's 36 odd hours of opportunity for you to immerse yourself in the sport. There's practice sessions of course, 
uh, fan zones, there's driver signing sessions, lots of support races, which is a great way of introducing you to different types of motor racing. There are driver appearances for those lucky enough to book corporate type packages, and there's even concerts on after the race. Now, the concerts, yes, they're great value for you, but they're also very important for dispersing people in a timely manner. What the circuit organisers don't want is for everyone to come out of that track straight after the race. And that's what happens in a couple of events where there are no concerts afterwards and there's maximum people vying for limited public transport. And attendance at those concerts is included in your ticket price for those events that have them. And some of the great ones, Singapore, Abu Dhabi, Australia, Bahrain, and a handful of others. I mentioned earlier on the cost of attending a race can be almost prohibitive. But if you have a big wallet, uh, you can spend over $100,000 heading to a race. And I did a video recently about that. And it's worth having a look on what you could spend. And I'm going to do another video talking about what is the least amount of money you could get away with spending at a Formula One race weekend. Now let's go to watching a race on TV. Of course, you get to watch it from the comfort of your home. You don't expend any money heading out of the house. There's no accommodation to budget for. You get exceptional quality of uh, television broadcast, multiple camera angles, but you do get served whatever the network wants to show you. We mentioned that earlier on. You won't have to endure getting sopping wet in the rain as I did back in Spa in 2021 and certainly in 2022 at Suzuka where they shortened the race, but we've still got horribly wet and you as a spectator, if you were in those stands, would have had to endure that wet weather. But when it does rain, the racing can get crazy. And if you're watching it on television, you won't get to see everything that happens. And a case in point, I was uh, at the last race in Monaco when the rain happened late in the race. I was at the Nouvelle Chicane and I couldn't believe the way the cars were bouncing around on the road there trying to find grip. That's something you may not see on television, but if you're on a grandstand or sitting on a boat, in front of that, you can watch with great detail. Get your binoculars out and you can zoom in on whatever you want to see. If you are going to watch it at the track, I'm going to suggest you must get a vantage point that has a screen because oftentimes you'll hear huge roars from somewhere around the track and you can hear a lot of the track action as you're sitting in your seat. And then you're going to want to know what have they reacted to. At least if you've got a screen in view, you can have that question answered. If you haven't, you will be just like we are often out on the track thinking, wonder what happened there. On the subject of crowds too, uh, large crowds make it very difficult to move around at a track and finding a good spot to watch the race, well, that can be tricky as well. General admission is the cheapest, then of course you've got grandstands and then you've got corporate hospitality, which offers you more space, great food and beverages, which are all included, but perhaps with a limited view. On the subject of general admission, most of the tracks put you in an area where you can stand. Or you might be able to sit on some grass, but if everyone stands, well, you're going to have to stand as well. But uh, somewhere like Suzuka actually has general admission areas which have tiered seating. So not technically a grandstand, but similar to, and that can be a much more attractive option. Another con of going to a race live is you're going to have to invest a bit of time planning your trip. And if you do 23 races in a season like me, it is a lot of work, I can promise you. But you do it far enough in advance and you can save a lot of money. For television viewers though, you have the luxury of commentary. So if you have no idea what's going on, you don't really have to pay attention because David Croft or Martin Brundle will be telling you exactly what you should be looking out for. That's a very powerful plus. Adios amigo and famos Carlos. So what are the races that you should attend if you want to go to a race? Well, um, I'm often asked that and I like Monaco for the colour but for the racing it's not very good. Another race I think you should look at going to is Japan. It's such an amazing culture, the track is just a brilliant design, there's plenty of excitement normally, the accommodation is not that fantastic if you want to stay anywhere near the track but that's one of my favourites. If you're looking for good value and a fun nightlife, well I don't think you can go past Budapest in Hungary, it's well worth having a look at. Singapore, it's darn hot. And if you're gonna to go to Singapore, I think you need to be in an air-conditioned corporate box. In a stand, when you're with a lot of other people, it can be quite uncomfortable for a long time. I like the Zandvoort race. I think for atmosphere, it's fantastic. And you can stay in Amsterdam and it's only a 30 or 40 minute drive from the city. And where typically would you be best seated at a race? Well, I think everybody has to do a first turn at some point. 
the thrill of watching 20 cars funnel into one or two wide at the first corner is an absolute buzz. And of course that's where you have the maximum chance of witnessing it's an incident. And if you can't get the first corner, try and pick a grandstand that has a couple of different angles. What you probably don't want is just a section of the grandstand that shows cars coming past at 300 k's an hour. Yes, you get to appreciate the speed, but you don't get to see too much action as a rule. I'll give you a great example of a great grandstand, this one in Monaco, because it looks over two sections of the track, pit lane at the top and below this section leading into Raskas. Now that if with a pair of binoculars you can see into every single garage and for my money that's a great place to sit. Harking back to that survey I did I asked people if they preferred watching at home or at the track and 80% said yes they'd rather watch it at home. So what is my take on this? Is it better to go to a race or is it better to watch it at home? Better to watch it at home. Without a doubt you'll see more, you'll understand more, you'll save a fortune but you must go to at least one race. You must experience what Formula One is like in person. And maybe you'll get the bug. I did. 2016, I went as a guest of Red Bull to Abu Dhabi and I stood in the garage and I had the headphones on. I was listening to Daniel Ricciardo talk to his engineer. And it was such a moment for me and a real buzz. And I thought at that point, I'd like to photograph this sport. And that's what got me excited about photographing Formula One, being at the track. I would not have been as excited had I have just been watching races on television. So I'm gonna urge you to get to at least one race, but know that you're better off probably watching it at home for a better understanding of what's going on. With that said, I'm gonna ask you to like the video, please. If you have not become a member, please become one and subscribe at the very least. You'll find all of my digital images from F1 at ProStarPix.com. For my merchandise, F1 photo books, signed driver prints and wall art, go to KimElman.com. And for my best images live from the track and all during the week, go to Instagram and search at Kim Illman. Thanks for watching and stay passionate. Oh bugger, there's mozzie boarding me.